Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. You know, it's one of the pleasures of the job when you see something and you get that sense that talent involved is on the brink of becoming a really big deal. And guess what? If you're within the sound of my voice, that must mean you're in the seats with once more. As always, my name is Dave Voigt and I'm the host of this podcast where we sit down with a wide-ranging variety of entertainment industry professionals we pick their brain about current projects, state of the industry, how they got started, and so very much more in a light and in a conversational fashion. And, you know, if you like how we do things around here, I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that you do because you're listening right now. And if you are listening, keep listening and hit that subscribe button. It means a lot. Do it. Give us the five-star rating on your podcast provider of choice. Uh, we're available everywhere. Places like Apple, Amazon, Spotify, Google, and plus we archive all of our episodes over at our In The Seas YouTube channel, so if you can give us a like and subscribe there as well, we would absolutely appreciate it. Uh, also, don't hesitate to check us out on social media. We're on the Facebook, the Twitter, the Instagram, uh, the Letterbox, the TikTok, and probably a few other places. I refuse to call Twitter X, by the way. It's still Twitter. But uh, we're there at In The Seats for all sorts of fun updates. And finally, and I do dare say most importantly, please pay us a visit over at In The Seats, in the seats.ca for all the latest and greatest from the world of film, television, basically the moving image at large. Because guess what? If we love to watch it and write about it and talk about it, we love it even more when you come by and read about it and listen about it. So do us that kindness and please pay us a visit. On this episode, we got a good one. It is opening in Toronto now. It's already opening in Quebec, but it's going to be opening in, uh, in provinces uh, in across the country, I'm losing my words for the next couple of weeks, it is called Solo. It is a fantastic, absolutely fantastic piece of cinema from uh, writer-director Sophie Dupuis, and it follows uh, young Simon, who must deal with the disappointment of two impossible, impossible loves, uh, a passionate but destructive crush on a uh, new co-worker, Oliver, uh, at his uh, drag club, but also a distant and cold relationship with his mother, Claire, who has just moved back into the picture after a 15-year absence. It is such a powerful character drama. It does these fantastic things, and it also is so really a love letter to uh, drag and drag culture and its... From a performance standpoint, it's fantastic. It's a visual delight. And I cannot say enough kind things about this movie. It really is one of those things that, if you've never seen a, you know, a French-Canadian film, or if you've never seen this film, go see it. It is absolutely dynamic, and I cannot wait for more and more people to know the names of not only writer-director Sophie Dupuis, but the young man who stars in the film, uh, the one only Simon, who is played by uh, Theodore Pellerin, who uh, you may have seen from a few other things. He's, he's done some various performances, both in English and in French. But this is a star-making performance, to be sure, and he does a fantastic job in the role. We had the chance to sit down with him after the festival. It played the festival. It did, it did so well. Uh, and just talk about uh, working with Sophie, the nature of the character, sort of, get, you know, finding the physicality of it all, and so very much more. But like I said... Solo is in theaters here in Toronto. I believe it's the Varsity right now. And it is expanding next week in Vancouver and other cities, I do believe. But first, enjoy our talk with uh, Theodore, because quite frankly, it's a darn good one. All right. Well, I mean, just to kick this off officially, I mean, obviously, thank you so much for the time today. I mean, and congratulations on your work, man, in this movie. You're absolutely fantastic in it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, I mean, I guess my first question is walk me through, I guess, those early days, like getting the script, talking to Sophie, and I mean, and really starting to find your way into this part. Um, it's a, a quite an unusual process, I guess, with, with Sophie getting started. I, I, I think she told me about um, the film or the idea of the film quite a long time ago, maybe like three years ago. And I started reading versions of the script before she submitted to institutions and and um, or or really having anyone else read it. Um, so it's it's hard for me to, to pinpoint like a first reaction to reading the script or a first reaction to the character even because it's 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 a blur. It's been an ongoing process for a while. 
and then the the process of also of working on the character and the script or is very uh, particular with Sophie. She really demands of her actors to kind of, um, well, she creates a space and gives time for us to to sit down and really go through the script and and talk about it and improvise and rewrite scenes and discuss the themes, the the the, the story that we're telling, not only the characters but also the movie as as a whole, and um, its rhythm, its beats, um, everything is kind of discussed. Um, in in this instance, it was mostly Felix, Sophie, and I, and and from there, I mean, the script evolves a lot, and the characters evolve a lot, and 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 Sophie really uh, takes all this in and is in prep, and she had her leg broken, and she was rewriting the script, and and that's what she wants. That's how um, she uh, feels in command of the um, of the story, of her characters, of the the um, of her scenes, um, it all kind of takes form in 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 that moment of preparation. Um, she prepares a lot, and uh, and then when we have a more final version, then we rehearse and we rehearse in group. And uh, all the drag queens, there was kind of a we had to to understand what would be the dynamics in the world. Um, and we had Tracy Trash, who's a real drag queen. We had like we understood the. We explored the humor, the 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 rhythm, their poetry. There was a all of this. She kind of um, allows for actors to to um, to give, and she 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 takes it, and then she uh, she films it, and she puts them in their best uh, light. So it's 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 as I said, I think it's it's impossible for me to to even remember what was my first take on it or, or my first read read. Um, it's all kind of intertwined with so much that I don't remember. Well, no, but I mean, that makes a lot of sense because there is such a sense of you and everyone involved really throwing themselves into their performances. And I mean, even from a physical standpoint, like you have to sort of understand the, the, the physical traits of not just what it means to do drag, but what your character is going through and sort of the movements and just putting yourself into that. Like, was there a, like, how early on did you know that I guess maybe the right question would be that this is, would be a very physical performance, much more than just sort of understanding the emotional beats and reading through dialogue, but it's like really something you had to do with your whole body. Um, well, I mean, from, from the first time that she told me about it, I mean, of course, a drag queen and a drag performer, there it's going to be physical and, and there's going to be a whole, physical aspect to it just the stage and and the dance and the costume and the make like everything and also the very the, the feminine um element you mm. have to develop your own femininity and be very comfortable with it and and for it to not be um uh like a cliche of a feminine uh man it has to come from from me it has to be my own femininity that i allow um to kind of resurface but um, yeah, I knew. But then also, physicality is 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 um, the word in French is and like it's I, I it's it goes together with everything. It's it's I never kind of think physicality and character. I mean, the body is <laughs> the body is what vibrates all the time. The body receives everything. It's kind of um, it's impossible to have one thing and the other, and 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 I always feel through my my body, and then I, I I don't think act with your face and then do movements with your body. It's just it's just live, you know. It's, just it's no for sure, yeah. But it's no, but it's interesting because uh, I yeah, it's I, I maybe not everyone sees it that way, but I I um I, I think it 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 became something that I was like people often tell me about physicality and then I was like, why? And, and I don't know, I had to kind of like intellectualize it. Um, but for me, it's just, it's one thing. Well, I mean, I think a lot of that also comes off with sort of the on-screen chemistry with, with Felix, because again, it's not one of those things that we see in the words it's, we see it in, the body language and i mean i think for me that's probably the thing i was most taken by just how much you were both saying to each other without having to say anything 
Well, I think that that comes also from that is preparation. Yeah, uh, that is having a dialogue already in place, and that is having spent two months working on the script and improvising scenes and 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 being with each other. And we don't get on set and our bodies and our you know we meet for the first time. Right. We have been around each other. There is a comfort. There is a uh, there is something, uh, and I think it's so important. I I don't understand how directors or actors m make it happen when we don't know each other and we get on set and we have to shoot a scene. It's it's terrifying. And sometimes maybe there's a spark and there's something that happens and that happened to me and it's great. But um, a, a theater-like process for me is so important. Um, how can you act and how can you be free when you haven't explored things and answered questions and if you are in a state of fear and of protection and of not all the questions are answered, you can't, I feel like you can't act. So for me, the work is always answering all the questions and making sure that there is nothing that is suspended so that it allows for you to be free and you can have surprises, but you don't have questions anymore. The mm -hmm. questions are answered. And then that is what allows for you to be surprised and to have spontaneity, spontaneity, spon anyway, you know what I mean? Um, so it's, it's all, that is always the goal of the process for me. And I think for Sophie too, um, the preparation allows for, um, a certain confidence that makes you free. I don't, I, I can't act if I am in fear that some things are unanswered, some things I don't know, some things I haven't seen, then I'm kind of like always looking, but I can't be looking if I'm acting. No, I mean, I'm curious because it definitely felt like a lot of the musical choices in the film were very much tied to the characters. Did you get any sort of input on that? Because I can imagine, because yeah, yeah. the thing I appreciate about this film the most is that it never kind of denigrates the culture or the, the scene. There could have been some obvious musical choices that would have just felt off or corny or off-putting, but every piece of music in this film felt honest to the character and honest to the environment. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, that is all Sophie's work and her collaborators on another level. I I, I mean, I feel like you're freeze. Can you hear me? No, I know I'm here. I'm here. Sorry. <laughs> um, but that is something that I find very remarkable is that all these musical numbers and the drag numbers um, aren't only there as a show. They also keep telling the story at the center of the film. And um, I, I, yeah, I think that that is very strong to kind of pull that off and, and make it happen because um, the numbers are always serving the story. For sure. No, I mean, I'm curious, because obviously you got to work with some actual drag performers. How did, uh, how did their notes help you in terms of like when you were, especially performance wise, when you were really sort of having to get into the moment and get out on the stage? Well, the, 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 the real drags who were on set with us, they didn't really give us notes. I think it was what really, um, just to become friends with them was great because you discover, you enter their world and they, they allow you in and it just, there's an energy, there's a humor, there's a quickness, there's a weediness, a uh, wittiness. Um, and so that is great because you're in it with them. So it gives a lot. Um, I think for the physicality and, and all the performance work, it was um, work beforehand with Gérard Reyes, who's a choreographer and a ballroom expert and a dancer. And um, that was really in, with him that we explored femininity and, and did the choreographies and, 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 and worked on that. Um, so he gave us notes. Um, so that was where the work laid, but otherwise with the drag queens, it was just kind of being there and, and having fun. Sure. No, I mean, I'm curious because I mean, I've been a fan of yours for a little while now. I mean, stuff you've done with, uh, Philip, like, uh, Jeunesse and, and, uh, the demons, when you're getting into something, you're getting into a project, obviously you're going to go audition, you're going to read, but sometimes you you have a, like, what are you looking for when you go out for something to, to be a part of and really sort of embrace it? Because, I mean, on one end, especially when you're working 
on a French Canadian film, you may, you know, you may, you may just be asked to read as opposed to sort of a flat out audition for say a Netflix show or even something like Bo, which you get to be on. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's mostly the writing. Uh, it's, that's fair. No, I, I can see that. Well, it's, it's M- Mia Goth, <laughs> that, who I love. I think she's an extraordinary actress. Um, said, uh, you can only be as good as the writing. And I think that's very true. It's like you can only everything is there and it's it's who you are and it's what I connect to. And it's the, it's really everything. The writing is everything. B- but um, it's always also the experience as a whole. It's kind of very cliche answer. But um, the actors are very important it's you're gonna live with them you're gonna be with them and if there's no connection if you are not you know if it's not happening then it's horrible it's just not it's just it's just not enjoyable yeah and it, and it's also how you feel on set with the director who is your first audience and who you act for um I need to be connected with them. I I I I need to feel like um, I want to give them what they want, and that I can give them what they want. Um, so it's a whole, but it's 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 mostly the writing. No, I believe that for sure. No, I mean just to put a bow on this, and I mean this is something I'm always kind of curious about. You've never been afraid to work in English and in French, but to me, as sort of a fan, as someone on the outside looking in, there is this dynamic that is happening in in French Canadian cinema that just feels different. Like if you had made Solo in English, or if you'd made Genesis in English, they would have been different films. I'm sh- I'm sure. Yeah, I'm- you know what I mean. It's like, what is it about that dynamic that makes you kind of want to? work on both sides of the aisle well what do you mean by dynamic is it is it um is it as a whole or is it just like me with the language you know? i would say as a whole because i mean it feels like french canadian cinema has a different kind of energy than say english canadian cinema or even cinema from you know the states or from other parts of or other countries there is something about french canadian stories and french canadian cinema that hits at a different energy level which to me as a film fan I've always appreciated. Can I just read you a text that I just literally got right now? Sure. From Philippe Lesage. He just he just texted me, I have a scenario to make you read right now. I love it. <laughs> um, um I don't know. I, I I really I it's I mean cinema and, and sets are just so different from each other all the time because they are they are who makes them? Um, so I'm having a hard time kind of pointing out a cultural cultural differences because even in Quebec, it feels so different one set to another just because people are, um, uh, yeah, directors, actors, producers, people at the head of the set make it and kind of infuse their energy and their attitude to it. And, and the set becomes them and the energy is them so i really i don't know no i mean i guess maybe the better way to word this is is just i've always gotten the sense from seeing you work that as much as you know if a big hollywood opportunity comes down the line obviously you would not say no but you wouldn't necessarily turn your back on working in french and working at home either because there's definitely two different kind of levels to it it, it, the the reason I like or I want to work in a bunch of places is only to have access to the better writing for sure um so that I'm I mean I I love it so much I love working on something that impresses me and that m- makes me excited it's just it, it's it's the best in the best thing in the world um, and I, I don't want to find myself working on things that bore me or that I don't want to do because I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Um, I, there's, I have no interest for it. Um, and so I think that that is the goal is to, to, 
to allow myself to constantly, and it's very, uh, I feel, I mean, it's, it might be completely out of touch to, to, to say that for many actors who, who maybe don't have that chance, but I, it's, it's really what I want. It's to be um, always passionate about what I'm working on. That is my goal. That is what I want. I don't want to be bored. I don't want to do things that I've done before. I want to be excited and feel like it's, it's scary and it's new. And um, I have to stretch new parts of me and new, new things to reach um, this writing, this character, this story. Um, otherwise, I'm just I'm gonna stay at home. Well, don't because Solo is never boring, and right. you and Sophie and everyone involved really do a fantastic job with this. Really, what I think is an electric piece of cinema. But honestly, man, keep up thank the good work, and thank you so much for the time today. Thank you, thank you so All much. Right. And don't forget to, to visit our friends over at Bay Street Video for all your DVD, Blu-ray rental, or purchasing needs this summer, as they are still open for curbside and some mailing delivery as well. Over at 1172 Bay Street, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, you can give them a call at 416-964-9088. That's 416-964-9088. Or send them an email at baystreetvideoto at gmail.com for any of your DVD and and Blu-ray needs.